What? What are you doing out in the middle of Bur Oak Woods on a murderously hot day again, audience? I'm getting tired of having to follow you out to these places. So, uh, again, this time, this one comes from our people in Idaho. Uh, they wanted to see a video on how to use the Biltmore stick in contest, but... Or, well, uh, so I came out here to Bur Oak Woods, and uh, I was like, hey, can I get one of those free Biltmore sticks here? And she's like, yeah, sure you can, but our forester's not here today. Here's his card. Uh, so, I guess I get to give you guys a Constellation Prize video today um, on timber stand improvement. And uh, so I've wandered out here to the middle of the, uh, I don't know, I found a good spot. I wandered around for a while and I found a good spot. So, basically... Um, there's going to be 20 trees in contest marked on a tenth of an acre plot. They're going to have one tree marked with like a giant pink ribbon or something. And they're like, that's your plot center. And then around that are going to be a bunch of trees marked 1 through 20. And you basically get to um, make one of three decisions. You can either harvest, deaden, or you can um, leave it to grow. So your goal is to meet a certain paradigm given to you by the judges and improve that spot of timber um, so that it maximizes uh, the... Either it's one of two goals. Either it maximizes uh, the quality of wildlife out of the area or more often than not, it maximizes the uh, timber production. And sometimes they will give you, um, they'll give you a mix of those two. So I'm just going to say to you, one of the, uh, one of the invitational contests uh, paradigms that I got. Uh, the landowner here wants to manage this piece of land for timber production. Uh, with wildlife uh, production as a secondary goal. So, your primary goal is to have good, high-quality hardwoods come out of this area um, that will make the landowner a handsome sum of, sum of money. Uh, but on the side, he wants uh, high-quality wildlife to come out of the area. Now, in Indiana, where you'll be doing this contest, uh, you're not managing oak, or you're not, you're managing oaks and hickory, and you're managing a forest that'll look like this, essentially. Um, so, your goal is not to make open areas with some, like a little glade with grasses. Your goal is not to have really thick cover. Your goal is essentially mast production. Now, if there's a small tree in the area that's not hurting anything, uh, let's say it's a black cherry. It's a little understory tree. It's not hurting anything. It doesn't have a lot of value there. But you may want to keep on that one tree because it creates soft mast in the form of cherries uh, for the wildlife. Or you may want to keep on an oak tree uh, because, or solely because, that it produces... Um, good hard, hardwood mast, not hardwood mast, acorns, there you go. So, I'm going to take you around to a couple of the trees. Now, sometimes they'll have small trees, um, like this particular tree. I mean, like, it's about an inch around. Actually, oh, that, yeah, that's, that one's still alive. Uh, they'll have them not marked, so you just need to ignore them like they're not even there. So here's our first tree. Uh, this one is a black walnut. There it is. Right? That looks like a good black walnut. You go pan up, oh, pan down. You see that it's, it's dying, right? It's a dying tree. It snapped off. 
in a storm or something uh, many years ago, and it's got two little leaders going up off of it. Now, I surmise the uh, trunk doesn't have very much value in it because it looks like the tree has uh, regrown around the old trunk. And the fact that it's been broken off and there's not really there much above it. But it is taking up a significant chunk of the canopy. So this tree that's been broken off, let me give you one more view of it, right there. See it's broken off, grown, those two liters. This tree would be a good candidate for deadening. Even though it is a, uh, a walnut tree, and walnuts are very uh, price, or they've got a very good, pr they pay well. Uh, even though that they pay well, you want to deaden this tree because there, there's just nothing there and it's taking up space. It's not making good timber. Now, this tree, this is a white ash. It is taking up a significant chunk of the canopy, but it's small right now. It's got room to grow on each side, and it's relatively straight. Let me uh, show that to you. It's got a little bend there, but I surmise that will straighten out over time. This tree is a good tree to leave to grow. Ash has a reasonably good value um, for, uh, for selling. Uh, although it doesn't make anything for wildlife, this one would be a good one to leave to grow because it's just on the verge of having good quality wood in it. I mean, it's a couple more years, and it splits way up there in the canopy, right? You see that? So, in a few more years, it's going to put on a lot of girth, and that girth will be over good height. Because you stop at the first split in the wood, or the first split in the tree, you want that to be delayed as long as possible, and therefore favor trees that delay that as long as possible. And uh, therefore they, just, they give you more wood per year of growth. Uh, that one's dead, that one's dead. Here is a eastern red bud. I'll show you. Right there. It goes up. See, I mean, it looks like, hey, this is on the verge of growth. This one might be a good one to leave to grow. But if you look up there, about 12 foot off the ground, it splits. So there's no, va that combined with the fact that it's an eastern red bud, there's no real value there, right? Because it splits so early, it's not going to put on growth very much. So this one would be a good one to, uh, to just cut down, right? So, well, what about this one, right? It's a hackberry. I mean, those have some value. It splits relatively early, and it's taking up a big chunk of the canopy. This one would be a good one to just harvest it now, right? Just, it's, it's not got a whole lot of value in it, but it's, there's value there. There's enough value there to drag it out of the woods. So this is one that you want to um, harvest because not only is it nearing maturity, it's, uh, it splits relatively early, so you want to get it out of here, but there's enough value to cut it down and uh, use it. Now, here's one that I really would suggest to leave to grow. This one, very small, this one's a northern red oak, I can tell. It goes straight up there in the canopy. Um, I mentioned to you guys, we're deadening that, uh, where is it? Over there? We're deadening that uh, black walnut over there. That's going to open up the canopy for this. And then the hackberry right there. We're harvesting that one, so that's also going to open up the canopy for this. So this tree is an excellent candidate to leave to grow because there's not any value there right now, but it's a very straight tree. It's a northern red oak, so it's got some reasonable value to it, and it will have room to grow. So we're going to leave that tree to put on some uh, growth in the next few years, and that combined with the fact that it is a red oak, uh, it's going to be fulfilling that secondary goal of timber production. I'll have to find one for, uh, here's another northern red oak. It's reasonably straight. It goes up there without very many defects. That one also, leave it to grow. Um, I'll have to show you one here in a second. 
Here's a white oak, right? White oak, a little more value to them. That's the second most valuable tree. You got a little smudge there. Uh, that's the second most valuable tree in the forest. It's reasonably straight, and uh, it's going to have a good canopy uh, once we open it up here, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to keep that one, but over here, just like the past few, there's a northern red oak, right? Small tree, but look what it does, okay? It curves off. I mean, it shoots way off to the side here. Uh, so this one, that curves off, it's never going to have any value to it because it's, it's shooting way over to try to get a little bit of the white oak's light. So we're going to cut this one down. We're going to deaden it. We're going to chop it off because it isn't going to produce anything because it's not a straight tree. All right, so you're wondering... Hey, are we going to harvest any trees? Um, yeah. So, here is a... Um, dang it, what is this? Um, I'm going to call this one a Machina hickory. Right, so this tree, it's big, it's hit maturity. Going up there, uh, there's just a couple of de defects. Because it's hit maturity, uh, we're going to cut it down, right? You want to cut down something that isn't going to be producing more money. Even, I mean, even if it's, even if it's an okay tree, cut it down because uh, you can produce more money faster with the same amount of light with the trees that are around it. All right, here's a mocker nut hickory. This one's a small one. We're leaving it. Um, then we're going to go over here, show you some more northern red oaks. Here's another mocker nut hickory, right? Uh, but it kind of curves off to the side there, if you can see that audience. That one, we're going to cut this one down because it's not straight. We don't want trees that are not straight. Straight trees equal money, money equals good. Uh, money equals a happy landowner. Here's another northern red oak. Uh, you look up, it's relatively straight. We're going to keep that one. Right? Here's another northern red oak. Relatively straight, no value to it yet. We're going to keep that one. Here's a bur oak. It's kind of crooked. It's small, plus we've kept the two trees on either side of it. This one is going to be cut down. We don't want it growing up and trying to compete with uh, the two no northern red oaks that we've chose uh, to keep. Here's two mocker nut hickories right here. This mocker nut hickory kind of goes off to the side, this one, but the one right behind it, its cousin, this one, goes straight up, it's a little bit bigger. We're gonna keep that one. But there just so happens to be another tree right here. Now this one is a hickory. I'm not sure. This one has some value to it. It goes straight up for a long ways, and it's a good 12 inches around all the way up. Oh, it's a Kentucky coffee tree. Yeah. This one, we're going to harvest it. It's got enough value there to get it out of the forest, right? So we're going to take it out. And that will give, uh, that will give the two mocker nut hickories on either side of it uh, a good opportunity to grow by taking that out. It'll grow right into its space, use it up well. So those two mock or that by harvesting that Kentucky coffee tree, we benefit the two mocker nut hickories on the other side of it, right? So that fulfills two goals: mocker nut hickories dropping hickory nuts. So we're fulfilling both go goals by harvesting that one tree. Uh, there's the other mocker nut hickory on the other side of it, also straight, also a keeper. So you can see there's a, there's a couple of themes pull, or, uh, emerging here. You want straight trees. For timber production, straight trees, no defects. If it's a young and it's got a big defect, cut it down. It's going to be a waste of that space. It's going to be a waste of your time. Um, 
because it'll continue to grow with that defect and not be any good. A good example of one of those that small ones you want to cut down, here is a uh, chinka pin oak, right? It's reasonable size, but you see it shoots off to the side and right here, look at that. I mean, it's got a big knot in it and it goes crooked. That's something, cut that one down. It's a waste of the space. You can easily get a tree within 10 years growing up just like that uh, to use that space much better because right now what there's five foot out of it there's there's six foot audience a whole six foot of merchable tree um, here's a good one to deaden this one is a Kentucky coffee tree look up right there it's no good I mean it broke off cut it uh, so you can see a theme. We're keeping the high value trees, we're keeping those mass producing trees, we're keeping the straight trees. Everything else, if it's got value in it, we're harvesting it. If not, we're deadening it. And also, keep in mind maturity, right? If something has hit maturity, harvest it. I mean, if, it's, if the value is there, then harvest it uh, to help pay for the timber stand improvement, right? Because if it's hit maturity, it's not gaining like a smaller tree could. We could easily uh, substitute in one that could do better, faster, uh, with more improvement. Now, I hope you liked the, uh, liked the video. Wow, we're all 16 minutes. You can see it's murderously hot out here. Um, but I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you people out in Idaho... You wonderful state forestry winners are going to win. I was told you guys didn't have any timber stand improvement, uh, which is weird because, like, it's a staple out here in Missouri. But, yeah, just rem keep those in mind. We want straight trees. We want high-value trees. Uh, we want trees that fulfill the goal of the uh, paradigm. Also, if you're if uh, wildlife quality is your first goal, or your only goal for that matter, you may want to keep a tree that has like a home for squirrels, uh, a home for raccoons, like, you know, a hole in it or something. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked the video, and uh, as always, have a nice day. Um, Wow, I'm stealing stuff from a whole bunch of YouTube stars. Outro of darkness, then redness, then white pants. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful year, month, day, week, time at National Convention. Um, good luck with Forestry. Bye.